Uh, today we're dedicating this uh, tunnel boring machine as it gets ready to launch for a 3.6 mile drive south here from the Northgate area, north of Seattle, down to the University of Washington, where it's going to connect with tunnels that are already finished that run all the way to downtown, connect with our service all the way to the airport. The Northgate light rail extension is going to cut through some of the worst traffic in the region. What it means is less than a 15 minute ride from Northgate to downtown, no matter what time of day, no matter what the traffic is like. You'll get downtown before your coffee's cold. This one is a Hitachi Zosen machine. The diameter of the machine is a 21 foot cutter head. That's standard for our light rail tunnels and light rail tunnels around the world. Uh, it's going to be actually one of three machines that are going to be mining this project. Actually, two machines will be mining, then we got another one on standby. This project has already proven to be a powerful model for sustainability. Even the tunnel boring machine, which you see behind me today, has been reused and refurbished. It's going through its final checklist and staging, and we've got a special bottle to christen it that won't harm it whatsoever. Three, two, one. This one's a veteran, a veteran of success. It's actually the same machine that dug tunnels for our U-Link project that is under construction from downtown to Capitol Hill and the University of Washington. The mining is finished on that project and it's about uh, over $100 million under budget and six to nine months ahead of schedule. So this project has some uh, big expectations to live up to based on our most recent tunneling experience. The contractor on the job is a consortium of JD, Michaels, and Coluccio. This machine, they're just finishing up the final assembly. They'll actually launch it in about June to mid-June. Uh, from there, we estimate it'll be about two years of mining. As it comes into each station site, they'll take about a month for any refurbishment, uh, any kind of general maintenance before then it launches on. So we've got about two years of mining and then about another year doing the cross passages. Here at the northern end of the project, we do have some sandy soils. Uh, we've got some special precautions in place to deal with that. Um, and there's going to be a few cross passages that could be tricky because they're going to be in sandy soils. We won't be able to dewater those areas, so we'll be looking at some ground freezing techniques that are been used throughout the industry, but it's new for Sound Transit. Um, we've got a new screw in this one to deal with the sandy soils. It's not a ribbon type screw, it's more of a platform screw, and um, it can handle those early, the early part of the drive and some of those more abrasive materials we have coming out. FG is really very proud of how Sound Transit has managed their light rail construction projects, and they have their own best practices, so the contractors who are doing the work can meet the schedules and price points that have been laid out of contract and deliver that quality product uh, for the public. 12% of the work accomplished on these projects will be accomplished by women. 21% of the jobs and work will be done by people of color. And including this project and all the overall uh, work that has been completed uh, will create more than 100,000 direct and indirect uh, good paying jobs. <clears throat> This project is wholly funded through um, a vote in 2008 called Sound Transit 2 that funded about 30 new miles of light rail projects throughout the region. The tunneling contract is about $440 million. Overall, the Northgate Link project is a $2.1 billion contract. 